<laughs> okay, hello. Uh, can you just... Uh... Oh, okay. Uh, can you go uh, a little uh, uh, forward, please? <laughs> Not on the stage. Thank you. Yes, we have not uh, a really conference uh, room, but if you can, we have very the space and you can hear me. So if you can just all to, to go after this line, please. Thank you. Again, 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 please. Yes, because we will, we will film also and do some screen. So it could be uh, nice if, uh, if we have uh, uh, an empty stage. Okay, I, I will begin just when all people are behind this, this line. Uh, we Is... I'm not sure we see you. Uh, you mean uh, we go outside the carpet, for instance? Yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> outside the carpet, outside please. Outside the everyone. carpet, thank you. <laughs> Just for all, and, and just the speaker can, if they want, come to sit here or to stay in here from here. Okay, I don't know if you hear me. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, so but we will begin. Uh, so Julien remains some rules here, so it's okay. And um, so hello everybody. Uh, up. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, so in spite uh, of the condition, we can see today. <laughs> please, hello, please don't uh, during a conference, please don't uh, use your mic and uh, and be careful. Your mic is off please, because we are a lot of, so if you can, to, to really uh, make sure that your mic is mute. Okay, <laughs> and thank you, and after we will have a time for questions, so, and, and in the world we really can uh, speak and do. So, uh, to beginning, so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here in virtual today, and uh, we can see today that the postponement of the physical event in April of the Laval Virtual and the Recto Verso have opened new forms of events. So I'm very delighted to experiment this virtual conference format with you. And I'm really curious about the thinking that it could open up, especially in terms of virtual meeting and new form of research and, and creation. So to start, um, concerning the art festival Recto Verso, I have some information about what's happening at LV World. So like you see, from April 22 to 24 in the Laval Virtual World, there is a Recto Verso space, uh, the Recto Verso virtual building, and there you can find information about the festival and video presentation of the artwork. Space is open to meetings, so don't hesitate to make use of it. And so today uh, we have a conference program. So we have created uh, this day specially for this virtual event in order to open the reflection and uh, on what is happening to us and to explore some axes around virtualization and creation. So the day today is divided in two parts. In the morning, we will question the exhibition of immersive and uh, interactive uh, artworks in real space, but also in the exhibition in virtual spaces. And uh, this morning, we will moderate uh, by Suzanne Beer, artist researcher associated with the University Paris 8 and expert in virtual museum. And the afternoon, starting at 3 p.m., so here normally uh, in the theater, in the conference hall uh, art, uh, we explore the creation realized by the virtual medium around different examples of artwork, installation, performance, etc. So this afternoon will be moderated by Joris Wedgdom from the HKU University in Utrecht. He's researcher and designer of theatrical experience using mixed and uh, and, uh, and technology, really mixed reality and technology. So uh, in the evening, 
uh, at half past five, we will do the vernissage of the Rectoverso Gallery with a little speech uh, at the rooftop of the Rectoverso building. Uh, we organize an open up meetup with the Art and Ver community on the rooftop of this uh, Rectoverso building. And uh, I invite uh, you to meet us to continue the discussion there tonight. So to continue uh, the program tomorrow, Thursday, uh, we will have another panel led by Julie Walsh about the curation of artwork in the real world and the virtual world. And uh, at 6 p.m., Beth will give an experimental performance in the Rectoverso building, followed by a few parties after. So, first of all, thank you all to being here virtually, and thank you to all our partners who support us to do that. So, now, uh, um, I will introduce this session, so exhibiting art and virtual uh, reality in physical and uh, virtual spaces. And I will introduce this session by telling you about how I explore creation in art and virtual reality uh, and its exhibition. And, uh, oh, sorry, but there is people come. <laughs> if, if, please, can you, can you go out the carpet? If you are not speaker, please, <laughs> it's disturbing for me. Thank you. I don't know, Paloma. Okay. So, um, so, uh, so I will introduce the session and uh, and to see how I explore creation in art and virtual reality and its exhibition, and how through my interdisciplinary background and my research creation, I created the Rector Verso Festival. So I would then like to propose some research axes that the exhibition and immersive and interactive artworks opens for me and share with you the experimentation we are currently developing. So it's a virtual creation of the gallery of the Rectoverso Festival, which was supposed to happen this year. So to introduce myself quickly, uh, in my background, I have crossed different disciplines and university from visual art, computer graphic, sorry, and uh, science to, uh, to uh, cyber psychology. And I changed about every two years. And sometimes I was studying at two universities at the same time, art and science. For me, the difference knowledge and skill were complementary and their links very precious. I did a thesis at the University of Paris 8 at the Digital Image of Virtual Reality Laboratory, which allowed me to link art science, technology, and psychology. So for five years, I explored the artistic creations that emerged between the real and the virtual around the notion of presence and wonder. And two significant artwork have emerged from this PhD in research creation. The first is Lapsurd, or the virtuality lab, which gradually carries the spectator away for four minutes in an experience of virtual surrealism and Christopher Rooms, which brings the spectator in a child dream, and uh, this artwork is still on tour with the play. So in my creation and research, I study the field of virtual reality, which is for me an artistic medium. Uh, what inspires me is to go back to the history in this field and to really understand how it's work but in particular on historical scientific writings such as the treatise of virtual reality which brings me together well, which brings sorry, together several researchers and specialists directed by philip fish what interests me is the immersion and interaction of the spectator in a virtual world and not just through a vr headset as well as the presence of the spectator in virtual and mixed world I studied how to schematize the spectator's passage from his reality to a dive into his presence in the artwork, how he stays here and how he leaves it after. So, and in the field of art and virtual reality, I am inspired by the history of art and artists who are interested in involving and immersing the spectator. In particular, I'm very inspired by the Visual Art Research Group in the 1960s, and they already wanted to involve the spectator in an action in the artwork, like Soto or Agam here. 
The artistic installations also question the idea of immersion. And with digital technology, the idea of participation, immersion, and play on perception is transformed into immersion and real-time interaction. So I explore different creation between the real and the virtual. Sorry. Like creation in augmented reality. Our performance on stage with different real virtual illusion. So we speak about virtual illusion and <laughs> okay. I don't know if okay, perfect. Um, so finally, what interests me in my thesis uh, is uh, the creation to explore the whole continuum between the real and the virtual in order to see new forms of creation emerging. And how the relationship is created between the spectator and this virtual mixed artwork. So at the end of my thesis, I had the desire to continue this exploration of artworks between the real and the virtual and the relationship of the spectators with these artworks and also to create spaces for exchanges and sharing. So it is from this vision that was born the Rectorasso Art and Virtual Reality Festival and the entire artistic pole at Laval Virtual. For me, the, a festival can show what's possible with creation between the real and the virtual. And in 2018, the Rectorasso was created. The festival annually gathered 40 to 60 artwork and their creators. It is composed of main exhibition, of a main exhibition, of about 15 selected artwork following a call for project called the Art and VR Gallery. And an artistic itinerary in emblematic place of the city of Laval, allowing for a more open-minded exhibition of the artwork of artists, researchers, students, collective curators. So, for me, the creation and direction of the festival Recto Verso allows me year after year to develop my research around the experience of the spectator with the artwork and to highlight some of the characteristics of Recto Verso and the way I like to do creation and exhibit immersion and interactive artworks. So, firstly, about the purpose of the exhibition. Each year, I explore the border between the real and the virtual around different current time. In 2019, for the first edition, we explored the real matter, virtual matter, and the history of the film. In 2018, it was the illusions, and this year, in 2020, the body. So it's nice because now we are in virtual, so okay. And we are exhibiting artworks complementary to the theme uh, to question that each year. We exhibit, for example, together artists pioneer in digital art, such as the pioneer Julio Le Parc. He was talking about the visual, uh, I was talking about the visual art research group of the 1960s, and Julio Le Parc is a pioneer artist in this field. And he created a new virtual reality installation with his son, Ron Le Parc, called Seven Alchemy in VR. We exhibit also both recognized artists in digital art, such as Catherine Incam here. And artists from several artistic disciplines, such as the artwork performance here, if dance is an unplaceable place. We exhibit also emerging artist researcher while exploring virtual reality as an artistic medium. And Recto Verso also interrogates the object of the virtual reality headset itself, questioning even an organic form of representation. So we don't only use virtual reality. Recto Verso also explores the concept of virtual reality. So we have artworks that question, for example, presence, like here with the illusion of life with this robotic sea anemone. So when I, I design the scenography and spaces for these works in different medium, I try to place myself from the spectator's point of view. I then like to observe and study what happens during the opening of the exhibition in different contexts also and scenography. So I'm asking myself this question. Can we consider the exhibition as an itinerary of immersive and interactive artworks? 
maybe as imagined, imagined by the visual art research group with the labyrinth and their exhibition in <clears throat> sorry in which the movement of the spectator was studied and provoked by the different parts of the tour but here there is a difference in the is the medium we therefore create a trajectory of immersive and interactive works but also between the real and the virtual. And this also involves constraints and new spaces for scenography. And finally, could we consider the setting up of the exhibition as a stage where each spectator is part of a choreography? So now I, I would like uh, uh, to discuss a term that the current event have made me think about. It is the exhibition of artwork, of art and virtual reality, but here in a virtual space. And so, yeah. Virtual spaces have their own properties and hollow for different configurations. So, for Recto Verso, the third physical edu edition of the festival planned on this theme, Real Body, Virtual Body, is postponed in 2020 to another location. But we worked on a virtual version of the, of the original exhibition space, a magnificent uh, chapel at the Ambrose Paré High School in Laval. And uh, in a few weeks of adaptation, we have recreated in 3D the 2020 Art and Ver Gallery in the originally designed scenography, but in virtual. And we have interpreted the presentation of the artworks there that were selected this year in this virtual space. So we worked with elements provided by the artist, video, text, 3D model, and animation. And we have also taken some liberties in order to make the representation of the artwork in space come alive as well as possible. For example, by taking images that have been cut out, soundtracked, and so on. The sound space is also developed in relation to the spectator's experience in the space. And you can see the complete virtual tour video on the Rectoverso Laval virtual website. Here are just a few videos showing the different artwork shows a photo and their interpretation for their presentation in the virtual world. So unfortunately, I can show a video, but you can see on the website. And but here are just some captures. Uh, so you can have an idea of the selection this year of our artwork in the Art and Ver Gallery of, of the Recto Verso this year. So just some picture about our 16 artwork and here is the last. So this creation reveals some interesting lines of thought for me. First, how to represent the artwork in the virtual space and could we experience the real purpose of the artwork like that? So this first step done in just a few weeks and with a small team is for the moment presented in video and in a simplified form of an interactive visit on the website, on, uh, in our website, Rectoverso website. But we are still working on it with the feedback of the artists in order to propose another version that will be experienced in, uh, in virtual reality. We work uh, with a virtual space, but also with a virtual time. And the exhibition as a beginning, we're going uh, to do a vernissage of the virtual gallery uh, in the Laval Virtual World this evening at 6 p.m. Uh, on the rooftop of the Rectoverso building. But for the moment, there is no hand. And it will evolve in terms of content and platform. So it's a virtual time. So thank you very much for listening and I will be happy to, to answer at your question. We have, yes, we have 10 minutes. So if you have a question, you can just click the button, raise your hand and, uh, and maybe to, to move a little um, uh, near me, I don't know. And, uh, and I can 
keep some question. Thank you. Yeah, I see there is raisin. <laughs> Can you go maybe near from me if you have a question and and to uh, after speak and open your mic. Do you hear me? I am Graciela. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, how can you, you, we have your presentation by slide or can we uh, have it in the Laval virtual uh, platform? Uh, yes, the presentation is a film, just now, in live stream. So you could see it on the Laval virtual channel uh, on YouTube. Okay. But I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's filmed with my avatar and all. <laughs> And if you want, uh, don't hesitate to come to see me if you want uh, more information. Okay, I thanks have a lot. <laughs> Other question? You can maybe speak because we are we are like more oh two two thousand no two thousand so sorry <laughs> two hundred but uh, in this room nice nice in virtual. Okay. Uh, Other question? Yes, Mark. Uh, Marc Augustin, maybe. Hello. Yeah, hello. <laughs> well, I'm I'm just discovering. I'm arriving this morning, so uh, I'll let you talk. <laughs> so. Okay. Other question about my talk. Okay, we, we have a little time because we... Yes, Volker? Um, can I ask you about budget? How much the production of the virtual exhibit... Uh, <laughs> so Zero. Park, <laughs> Zero, because uh, I'm a researcher and engineer too, so... Uh, with a little team, uh, with Julien here and another person, uh, we, we have made that. And I have uh, asked at all the artists to, if they can participate, to give me with me and work with me uh, with uh, elements, 3D model and all. So me, I, I used to you to to uh, create with Unity 3D. And so I do uh, artworks and scenography inside. So I have I have, I have made uh, we have made all uh, with zero budget with just uh, our, our well, in the in the team of Laval Virtual. <laughs> no, no, uh, and, and some also we have also support. So we have people who help us in this period. So it was very nice also. And Maybe. yeah. We, they will help you to, to find the person who wants to ask a question. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cesar Fortan, could you ask okay. your, your question? Yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> because we have very... Well, very Cesar, little. if you have a question, you can just... on. Yeah. Can other people, team, for example? I see a lot of right hand, but uh, maybe you can put on your mic and try to speak. <laughs> it's the first conference in this day, so all people try it also. Hello? Ah, yes, I, I understand. Uh, this I, is Victoria Herrero. I just raised my hand. Uh, okay. Perfect. My question is very simple. You talk, You said that uh, there was going to be an exhibition tonight. Well this afternoon at 6 p.m. on the rooftop? Yeah, um, at 6 p.m. we have we do the vernissage uh, yeah. of the virtual gallery. It's just like uh, a meet, meet up in virtual because uh, I will be there and, uh, and we can just talk and, and hold. But we launch uh, the virtual uh, exhibition and you can yes. see the virtual exhibition on our website. You have uh, the visit, uh, virtual visit on our website, Recto Verso. You have... 
okay. you have a button and you can click Sorry, visit no uh, the Art and Ver Gallery, the Gallery Virtual, and uh, on our website, and you can uh, visit in uh, in an interactive way. So tonight okay. at 6 p.m. we we will just launch all of this uh, initiative. And I can access this through the website. Yeah, yeah. Website okay. Recto Verso Laval Virtual. La, 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 you see my uh, on my slide. <laughs> okay, so there is no need to, to look around for it in this uh, in the application. <laughs> yeah, in the application there is a building called called Recto Verso, and in this uh -huh. building we uh, there is a lot of screen and we present the festival. So oh. you can click on this screen and, for example, you can see the after movie uh, of the other edition and you can have uh, also the links uh, to the website and to have uh, different. So don't hesitate to visit this, uh, this building to have some information about Trektovat also. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, we will continue. I invite all the people to go out the carpet, please, because <laughs> to continue and uh, please, if you want, if you can. Uh, I remember if you don't see well the slide, you can uh, put uh, you and click on the little loop. And, uh, and uh, even if you are uh, very far, you can have uh, all the screen. So maybe uh, can you can you go out the carpet, please? Thank you, thank you, Luc, Daniel, <laughs> Paloma, Lucio. Judith. Oui. Hello. Bonjour. I had a question. Yeah. Is it too late? Uh, okay, last question. We have two minutes. So okay. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, is it possible to access? Uh, to the experience, to the art creations, and so on, through uh, mobile or uh, uh, devices. Yeah, yeah, no, no, because we we haven't um, uh, code the interaction for mobile oh, yet. But I have tried yesterday, and it, and uh, it's open. Uh, it's open the application on, on, on mobile, but no, because all the interaction to go in the gallery it's uh, with keyboard and the mouse. So uh, I prefer that you use uh, for the moment. We will see after, but for a moment, I prefer you you open it with uh, with your computer, and we will do also a virtual reality uh, version, but uh, not yet. Okay, thank you very much, Judith. Have a nice. Okay, day. so no, I will introduce uh, the other speaker. If you can uh, really all go out the carpet, please. <laughs> I know the space is uh, is maybe not. Uh, well, okay, maybe the speaker will come here in this part to... So I, I uh, introduce now Suzanne Beer, maybe you can come here. Suzanne, I don't know, where are you? Perfect, Suzanne, perfect. Uh, so Suzanne uh, was going to talk about uh, her, new, her new books, of uh, Virtual Museum, and uh, she moderates also all the rest uh, all uh, of the morning. So maybe Suzanne, I let you uh, two, three minutes to to add your slide. Okay, okay perfect. Thank you. Ah, perfect. And and to to begin. Thank you. <laughs> Question, Judith. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking at virtual art, like what do you see actually as, let's say, the specifics of the medium when you move through different aspects of different VR presentations? Uh, in virtual or in real? I don't know. Uh, no, I mean, I mean in virtual art, you know, like, for example, in photography, maybe uh, it's yeah. composition lighting or in film, it's, you know, something different. What would you see in VR? To, to the specificity, sorry, the specificity of the virtual uh, medium? Uh, yes, especially in terms yeah. of art. Uh, but for me, uh, that is very interesting for me is uh, the immersion and the inter real time interaction with the artwork and uh, to see how a spectator can move and can, can move uh, and uh, and enter in contact with the artwork so for me uh, the virtual reality uh, as and all the interactive and immersive art uh, as uh, have the, the specificity, specificity to uh, involve the spectator in another way and also to open uh, other form of creation 
because you you can be very immersed and you're interactive and uh, it involves also for the spectator to move really to have gesture and all i don't know oh. if, if it's uh <laughs> answer yeah no, cool. no? thank you <laughs> thank you i can answer other things as we're interacting <laughs> yeah I've Okay, so we do about virtual museum. For, so, okay. So you we've can... seen the difficulties, yeah, the categorization difficulties. We have seen that. Okay. Uh, so we can go to the next slide, which is um, I've been trying to, I've been doing a categorization by comp comp complementary and substitution nature. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. You hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay. You can continue. And when okay, you start great. To, to speak, I, I change the slide. <laughs> Thank you. So sorry for the problem. So we start by seeing a classification main lines. Then we see each aborescence which, with examples. We're going to classify along a simple principle, which is a comparison between a virtual and a real museum. Virtual museums are always in relation with real museums, whether it is an independent or independent um relation the extreme is a virtual museum which would depend of no absolutely no institute museum in this way we integrate the study of virtual museums inside of the general definition and expression of museums so we are asking what are the functions of virtual museums do they complement real museums or do they substitute for them Attends une seconde. Uh, you, it's still the, the other slide, the slide before. Um, and it points to two issues. If, um, if it is a complement, then the virtual museum can never be a complete museum. But if it is um, a substitute, then is it really a museum? Because a virtual museum is always showing images, reproductions, and a real museum must, must show the real things. So there's a real problem for being a virtual museum as a substitute. Okay, uh, next one, please. And the issue about real things is very important for us because, um, because it is the problem for today. Um, it is the first problem for um, museums which are reproducing, uh, digitalizing uh, masterpieces which are not made in digital world. But it is also a problem for um, virtual muse museums um, showing digital works, native digital works. Why is that so? And why is a um, virtual museum not showing the real digital work? There are many uh, reasons for it. Uh, first of all, um, digital artworks maybe uh, are not watchable, they're not renderable because all the computer components with which they were made are gone, they're obsolete, so you can't do it, you can't show it. Um, or another, another reason is that the virtual museum cannot integrate the algorithm, the technology of the, of the digital artwork. In, the, in this, this reason, uh, even uh, with even native with artworks, native artwork, even with native artworks, one has to reproduce, which uh, you, Judith, Judith Geth, has said in the introduction on the side of Recto Verso of this year, she, you have written, we created a 3D model of this space and elements of the planned scenography, and then imagined an interpretation of each artwork in the virtual space based on certain elements provided by artists. And this thing of interpretation is typical of a reproduction uh, issue. So, so even in even with digital works, um, native digital works, a uh, virtual museum has to reproduce and not is not able to show the real thing. Voilà. Prochaine. So now we're going to see. Next slide is we're going to see uh, first how museums, virtual museums, are in a complementary relation with real museums. Then, on second part, museums 
virtual museums as substitutes and the third part, a mixture of complement and substitution. Thank you. So in the first part, we're going to see um, this virtual museums as being complements. So what is a complement? A complement is an added part to a whole. A complementary uh, virtual museum cannot exist without its real existing counterpart. Therefore, the basic assumption is that a virtual museum cannot exist without anything else. So it doesn't have an, an it's not original, it doesn't have a true identity. In this kind, but it's very interesting possibility as well. So the aim of a complementary museum is to semiotize a real museum. It can do it in two, two ways, exclusive in an exclusive documentary way or in a multi-sensorial semiotization. And what we're going today to do is not saying the documentary virtual museum, but the multi-sensorial one. Yeah? Uh, so, multi-sensorial semiotization, you have several ways of doing it. You can have very um, simple, I mean, uh, sites, just sites, or second way, you have virtual visits, and then you have virtual museums are complete complementary worlds showing of real museums. So now we go right to the second part, which is more interesting for us. Uh, just very shortly, very briefly, virtual museums are existing windows on the web. Uh, all museum sites are ways of existing because virtual existence means physical diffusion, but it has editorial presentation, which is more um, um, I mean, which is a more generalistic presentation than trying to do a real 3D museum. But however, the complementary tours, you can have 3D and pseudo 3D. So we're going to see virtual visits at, in pseudo 3D and in VR and 3D. Next. So in pseudo 3D virtual visits is the typical visit that you can do on, on general sites. Um, the Louvre, the Hermitage, the Museo 3D, Galileo Galilei, and Google Arts Culture, Arts and Culture, gives the possibility to um, visit museums using, for Google Arts, the Street View, uh, the Street View technology to be able to explore museums' um, spaces and collections. So you can see next, next, um, next image is an example which is not moving because we can't put any videos here. The Hermitage, the visiting the pseudo 3D VRM visit of the Hermitage Museum. And next one is the one of uh, the Acropolis Museum in Athens, which is uh, explorable with um, with Google Arts and Culture Project. Uh, next one. That. That's the next one. C'est laquelle c'est là encore? That's the Acropolis, and this is a VR visit. This is a VR visit of Boudel Studio which is made by Art of the Corner and is using photogrammetric uh, and uh, narration. And when you click on things, you can have a narration, an audio narration, have uh, more information. Uh, so it's um, like a, a real VR visit using head mounting displays. Okay. Uh, and a very big um, area for virtual museums is the projection in virtual in the virtual virtual world of museums objects. 
you have uh, real objects, museums, real objects, which are projected in persistent universes. You also have imaginary objects, which are projected in virtual museums. You have 3D and VR animated paintings. They are virtual museums, which gives a cultural presence. You have AV virtual museums, which give virtual presence. You also have virtual architecture in virtual museums, which give the real museum's presence. And finally, you have oniric virtual museums, which give, with serious games, a possibility to do narrating. So first of all, we see um, we we'll see real objects. What's a real object? A real object is when a um, museum shows real objects, like uh, you can see here in the in the next slide. You can see the International Space Flight Museum, which is a museum in Washington, which is showing rockets and um, rockets and. Uh, which cannot be shown in the real museum. So they have projected a world in Second Life in which one can really visit uh, rockets, go in them and uh, even have the impression of, of driving them, which is absolutely impossible in the real world. So in the real museum world, there is a need to be completed with the imagery of this world. Another way of showing uh, real things is showing a real event, as in this example of the Berlin Virtual Gallery weekend, in, which, is a real, which was a real uh, event in Berlin, with its counterpart in the virtual world, which was a connected world and using 3D. You could connect with avatars from every gallery and every person of the public, which was in, the, in this virtual world. Uh, next uh, possibility is the imaginary objects, which can be materialized with quotes, materialized in virtual museums. Um, uh, virtual museums, I mean, real museums cannot, can uh, do some scenographies of imaginary imaginary um, objects. L imaginary objects are like literature, literature objects, objects imagined, imagined by artists uh, in literature, in fantastic literature, in science fiction. It can also be objects which are belong to series, to fictional series, uh, like uh, Star Trek or whatever. And um, in real museums, you can make scenographies, but in virtual museums, it's much, it's much better to make a 3D model, which is really able to be animated and to get into interaction. So virtual museums are really the, the best place to make complementary, uh, complementary scenographies and animations for these kinds of museums. So in this. Then next we see a scientific, the sci-fi museum. Sci-fi museum, which is located in Washington or in Hollywood and has uh, an island in, in uh, Second Life in which you can go in a, in a holodeck. You can use uh, one of these, uh, you can use one of the cars which are uh, coming from such a novel. You can get in the air in the first balloons, which were imaginated. You... And uh, in the next slide, you can see, next, uh, next slide, you can see that's the science fiction uh, museum in SL. Next slide. You... This is the holodeck, this is the power station um, hub, where you can go to all these different um, places which scenographize novels, scenes. This is the holodeck, which has been uh, designed for SL. And this is 
uh, um, a mix of an, a real event and an imaginary object uh, with this um, science fiction festival in Nantes, which is called Utopial, for which uh, Yan Min made um, a 3D model for Second Life, which is called Festival SF. And you could go to this Utopial and not be there and be in this virtual world, um, inside of this virtual world event, uh, completing the real world one. And in this virtual world, you could talk with some of the writers, you could see uh, scenographies and things from, this, from their uh, steampunk fictions. The next category is uh, 3D and VR animated paintings. This is also a very important uh, way to develop um, virtual museums because uh, a virtual a virtual image, um, a digital image, can bring the imaginate, Im imaginary picture world live and people can explore, get into them and explore them. So these paintings can be put in persistent worlds in which avatars can do things and uh, do kinematics or it can also be made in VR. The next, uh, next part is the part in SL, where Robbie Dingo um, developed and designed um, a, a space in which uh, of quite a few paintings of Van Gogh were modeled in 3D, and you could enter uh, Van Gogh paintings and explore them, go around them. So that's a few pictures of what you could do in this world. This is the Arl, Arl Eden, with this uh, little house in which uh, Van Gogh used to live. You can go in his room, see his chair, uh, sit on his bed, which is quite a funny thing to do. Okay. Um, there you have this night terrace bar, the night bar, the night scene of the bar. You can pay, play who. The uh, next thing is VR paintings exploration, where you use VR goggles and you get into a pre-calculated world, which is more like a 360 degree video, which has a small interactivity. You can pan around and maybe you can trigger explanations. Many things, um, nice things have been done, have been made, for example, with DALI World, the DALI World, which is a really good world for virtual museums, virtual uh, explorations. You get into this world, and you get into uh, this uh, uh, millet and jealous, which are made as sculptures. You get into them, and you wander inside of the desert. This is made by St. Petersburg, uh, Florida, Dali Museum, which you can explore. And another production has been made by Arte 360 degrees. Arte 306 degrees, 60 degrees, has made a 360 degrees narrative of a Buckland painting which is in Berlin, Alte Meister Gemeld Gallery, which is the island of the dead. And you are with Karen in the embarkation, which drives you to the Isle of the Dead. And, it, and the film lasts when you actually arrive there. Um, AR, next thing is AR. AR complements is a way of complementing um, ruins, uh, witnesses very destroyed uh, witnesses of the past, because thanks to AR, you can be in these places. You can complement the view of ruins by the image, the 3D image of the complete building at its climax, which you can see, next slide, with this Jumiège, with this Jumiège, um, how you do that?
You see that the zoom is. Uh, yeah. This the first part, the bottom part is the ruin, and the top part is the is the model which is um, interpolated and continues the real building, which gives a very good image of what is a complementary muse virtual museum. It really completes the real part. So, uh, come back and see. Yeah, sorry, I don't know why. Uh, where is it? Why? Ah, it could come back, I think. There is just a, a bug from Conquil. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, so, so, so can you put it back on presenter, please? Or? Yeah. Judith, can yeah, you, yeah. could you give me a, the hand to move them, maybe? No, no, it's, it's too complicated. You can do it? Okay, yeah, okay. I'll I try, but uh, there is just some oh. lag. It's, it's normal because it's loaded each time from my PC to the presentation, so it lags uh, sometimes. I don't Do know. you have something? It's gone again. Fuck it. Um, sorry. It's gone. Uh, it's crashed. Sorry. I don't know yeah, why. It's Maybe crashed. Crunk will have too much people. Uh, because, yes, more than 100% more than of you, the thing, so. Uh, okay, I I do again the screen. Uh, okay, I don't know. Conclude. You don't crash know? for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know why. Okay, I will relaunch Firefox. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I can try again. Maybe let's try again. No, no, it's okay. I think it's uh, it will be okay in two minutes. Uh, okay, okay. And here, I just take the link and share the link. And now you can refresh and see. Okay. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Great. So, do you, is that an interview? Can you do the presenter view, please? Yeah. Sorry, my. All is so. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, it's complicated between Google Slide, Crankwheel, everyone. <laughs> we go back to hot slide very quickly. I don't know. Yeah, um, a little this late. Is number number thirty. Number thirty. Okay, here. Okay, 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 okay. Ah. Oh. Okay, I don't know why it's not in full screen, like that maybe. Okay. Do you see? No? Not, I have to refresh it for now. Don't see anything. Oh. Can't see nothing. Okay, I can't see. Okay, I don't know what's happened. I, I do again. Yeah, sorry. Um, I think a lot of people are tranquil and... Okay, so... Tranquil is not very tranquil. Is it better or not? Me, I see. Oh, for now. You can see? Yeah. Okay, let's try it. I'll try. It's coming. Why? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, great. So, so maybe next one? The sketch bot? Right. Sketch bot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. No. Um, no. Okay. Conquer. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
Did Oui. Uh, uh, if I may, maybe you can upload the file directly. It works perfectly when it's like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll try to, to, to do it. Yeah. I do it. Thanks. I don't I'm doing it. Okay. Because it's okay for me if uh, if you want. Okay. Yeah, for you it's okay. Doesn't show anything. Then. <sighs> well, I do it, Suzanne, because we are not a lot of time to. I I do it. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay, yeah, I yeah, share yeah. my first screen and we continue like that, okay? Because I okay. think now I have in local, so it's better. Up. Can you, can you stop me? Voila. Okay? Yeah, that's okay. So let's go back to to number thirty. Uh, yeah, he's not sorry. I don't know why he, he's like that. Okay. No. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know why he do that. Yeah, I have to do a PDF. Why, Congress? Oh, I can try if you want PDF. But, but sorry, for, if you have some question to beginning <laughs> to... Um, uh, Well. Oui, bonjour Suzanne, ici François. Bonjour François, hello François. En attendant euh, les petits bugs de présentation. Question par rapport à oui. votre euh, présentation. Euh, concernant le fait justement d'essayer de se pallier, si j'ai bien compris, de l'obsolescence de la partie matérielle, j'ai pas trop compris l'idée qui était derrière en fait. Ah oui, um, maybe I do it in English for everybody? Oh, yes, a little. Okay, because um, you have I mean, it's the general problem of digital artworks that which are made for with materials, with technological material, which get obsolete, like uh, artworks from the 90s are very hard now in the museum, like uh, Karlsruhe Museum, the AKM. They have to use, they keep the old computers to be able to really produce, I mean, to, to show these digital artworks. That's what I meant. But every digital work, artwork is made with components which get obsolete. So this digital artwork has to be reproduced with other components. That's what I meant. Can you hear me? Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I think it's work and it's better in PDF. Do you see? Oh, yes, that's perfect. Okay, we so, continue yeah, because it's, uh, yes, we are late on the program, I think now. Yeah, so okay, you... yes, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. So it's, it's number 30. Maybe I can ask one more question. Yeah, maybe, because I don't oh, yeah. know. It doesn't work. Yeah, regarding, this... di yeah, regarding yeah? digital art. Uh, I found that uh, it's really 
um, hard to sell the digital art if it's uh, bodiless, if it's without any physical representation. Do you have any uh, um, links uh, to investigate regarding this topic? Oh, uh, not right now, because it's uh, it's it's uh, it's the I mean it's the central topic about digital art, how to sell yeah. it, how to distribute it, and and so on. So there are quite a lot of I mean quite a few links, I suppose, but the problem isn't really solved. Yeah, there's another question. Then yeah, oh, yeah. Who is... the chat if you want. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, hello. I just had a question regarding the um, quality of the virtual art, actually. Uh, for example, when you spoke of the um, augmented reality for the uh, ruins, uh, I just wondered is uh, when you have now uh, video games that are really, really realistic, but yeah. sometimes, well, a lot of times when you go to a museum and, for example, the, the images the virtual images you showed of the Space Museum, uh, they are very low quality. I mean, is there uh, any explanation about that? I mean, is there any um, expectation that in the future that the, the museums will uh, invest a little bit more in the quality of the graphics? Well, I think you just answered your question. Is the problem of, of investment uh, of the quantity of money museums have to develop their, their uh, virtual means? And uh, museums don't have much money, and video games have is an industry which is really much richer. You can't compare the money which is uh, put in um, in Assassin's Creed with the money which is put for. Uh, I mean, in museums, it still is. I mean, they don't have much money for, in the first place. In the second place, they don't. Um, they are not yet really convinced that using virtual means is interesting for, the, for, for them. So they won't maybe put all the money they could to make proper images. So you think there is a possibility that this idea of um, not being really sure about investing will change now that we have these uh, uh, virus problems? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's getting better, yeah? <laughs> well, that's a good, I mean, that would be a, a good consequence of this of this uh, yeah, lethal good. virus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Suzanne, I don't know because we, we are maybe too late. I don't know if maybe you, you can share your, your slide and continue to answer like one or two questions. Because I oh, think yeah. you, were, you, were, you were just at the middle of your presentation and I think is uh, no. Yeah. Well, I just give the the overall of the of the of the other part, I was I was going to develop the um, the substitutive side, the substitutive side in which virtual museums are real autonomous museums, and I was going to show a few museums of this kind, institutionalized museums, which muse, virtual museums, which want to be public museums, just as physical ones, and uh, other explorations of virtual museums, which are VR or 3D, which want to show which kind of museums, I mean, which kinds of museums virtuality can make. I was going to show some use parts by Yan Min, some virtual museums of Patrick Moya, to see how virtual museums in a substitutive way are going to be to show pre-existing museums, which are not existing, post-existing museums, and um, also absolutely non-existing museums. So substitutive museums are able to give existence to non-existent thing, whether they are not still there, whether they are no more there, or whether they will never be there. And then in the last part, I was going to mix the two categories of substitution and and, complete, and completion and show um, the demoda, demoda, which is half virtual in virtual reality and half in real reality. And it's a kind of uh, conception in which virtuality and reality are joined together. Um, well, 
And the last thing was to say that when you're always in between virtuality and um, in a complementary way or in a substitutive way, which one do you choose and how do you choose them? How much ingredient or what of complement, how much ingredient of substitution do you choose? Because uh, you can be like virtual reality in a continuum between reality and virtuality. That's it. If anyone has questions, any more questions? Oh, I can't see it. I can hear. Yeah, we can, we can take, uh, we can take uh, like two questions and I can call Tiffany and Helen. We, we are a little, uh, so we late on our program with this virtual configuration, but so it's a very an experiment. So uh, I, I, I think but we try, uh, but uh, okay, but you, you can, uh, if you have some question and I call Tiffany and say, yeah, hi Tiffany, perfect, Ellen, your collective, and uh, you can now set up your things. Hi. Okay, perfect. And if you have some questions for Suzanne during this, we set the scene. Thank you. You can open your mic and, and speak. Hi, uh, Suzanne. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, Thank do you. you think with uh, with your book or only with your book or which kind of other um, guides we can use to designed our museums if we want to create new museums so how we can decide and which elements we can use to decide which of these technologies to use all right um it's uh, my book is not a technology one it doesn't show you how to make virtual museums but it gives you a reflection to think about which tools you can use because you think about the goals what you want to do with your virtual museums, which kind of people you want to touch, uh, what do you want to show, and then um, what is the reality in which you are making it, and gives you uh, all the I mean, all the choices you can make, you know, from this point of view, which is um, which is an important thing because it's always something that you have to think about. And then the technological part will, will then come from the answers to these questions. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Welcome. Who else? I can't hear anything. Hi, I'm Nikita. Thank you for the presentation, Suzanne. Um, I was wondering if there is a place where we could find your slides because there was also some video. Yeah, OK, I'll put them somewhere. I'll tell you the afterwards because um I'll, I'll send a link to to judith and ophelia maybe okay thank you so, so much. you can have the slides you're welcome um now uh, shall i um introduce the next speaker yeah i can do it if you want <laughs> oh i can do it oh, it's ellen okay. it's yeah. ellen okay yeah yeah you, you if you can hear me it's perfect yeah so, Ellen, Eunice, you're here? Yeah, you're yes, here. Yes, I so am. Ellen... Oh. Okay, yeah. hello. So, <laughs> Ellen Eunice is a Rectoverse artist in residence. Almas Eunice is a poet of the indiscernible, mixing virtual and oneric images to seamlessly deploy our consciousness into a dream state. She paints, engraves, and draws, as well as doing interactive I'm installations so projects. And uh, sh um, today she's going to talk about the digital art museums she has just been making with In Dialogue Collective, which has just opened last Friday and it's called Children of Cyberspace. 
to you, Alan. And uh, uh, it's Tiffany also, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think just a detail that has been uh, mixed up. Um, I, I, I was participating to the exhibition, uh, uh, the virtual exhibition that uh, uh, Children of Cyberspace, that in dialogue they um, are the collective uh, that uh, who uh, Im implemented the, the virtual museum. And I was invited as an artist. So uh, I think that uh, it's um, Tiffany who will uh, talk about uh, the project. We had a previous collaboration with In Dialogue. I will talk about it later. So uh, I will uh, I will give the uh, the word to, to to Tiffany first, <laughs> if it's okay with you. Thank you, Alem. So here were two people, Kalin Segal and Tiffany Tali. Hello. Uh, we're in Dialogue Collective and we just launched uh, the Children of Cyberspace uh, Virtual Museum. We originally work in mixed media. We do installation art, so a lot of physical objects. But we also did before some um, uh, VR experience and the immersive uh, spaces. So we found ourselves when this situation happened kind of without uh, an exhibition space. So right I think it was the second day or third day that we decided to open this space to still have a way to interact with the public, to still have a way to do what we love best is to create shows, to expose, to, to have a dialogue with the, our public. And not only for ourselves, but also to for other artists to come in and to create like a, a community around this project. So we opened uh, Children of Cyberspace as not only a museum where the curate where the items are curated before, but more as an open platform where everybody could theoretically drop in his content and share it with the world and now we're in the process of, kind of defining what is the main uh, main defining elements of this uh, community but for the moment we want to really focus on the idea of, a, of an experience that is not curated by an algorithm so the uh, rot of randomness introduced into the way the user ends up experiencing, navigating through the artworks. Um, and uh, the spatial organization of our museum will be divided in uh, multiple rooms. As Karin described, the main, uh, the main space will be the public museum where anybody can upload their art artwork. And there will be some side um, side exhibitions as well uh, one which is the permanent collection which will be a selection of this public upload some temporary exhibitions that will be organized uh, by um, gallery museums curators and so on even artists themselves um, and around those spaces we will organize events public private live guided tours with artists uh, where there is a level of social interaction as well among the public and with the artists and organized and um, we are uh, we are gonna host this summer an art festival uh, a digital art festival amural uh, which has been cancelled and this is something that we want to bring forward as well like having the the space uh, taken over for a, a given amount of time um, for a festival to present their artists so from our perspective there are like two types of users that are, in, are using this kind of platform is the public and the artist. So somebody who just experienced this uh, uh, medium or somebody that is floating and constantly creating into it. From the artist's perspective, we, we for us, this, this museum is a void. It does not have full ceiling. It's a void where the artist is giving a, a floating okay. platform to do with it as he pleases. Uh, a very important feature of the museum is that we will prioritize uh, digital formats, Con uh, artwork that have been produced in the, the digital world and to offer a new means of experiences, the, experiencing uh, 
visual artworks by turning around them, interacting with them, like having some figures. And so the artist will um, will um, will have access when he uploads his artwork to what we call the fitting room, um, which allows to first of all upload the artwork, but then uh, curate a scenography around it, uh, position light, sound, uh, maybe change the environment and other effects and function like becoming like smaller, changing the camera perspective, and so on. Triggering animations like art forms uh, of uh, like re reproducing the interactive experience that you would normally have when you would think of installation art within the 3D, uh, 3D space and then after he finishes his up his content he deploys it wherever he wants in this virtual void and he will have um, the artwork will be accessible for 36 hours in order to allow a renewal of content as our uh, focus is to create like a dynamic um, yes. medium that changes every day so the idea is that you can re-upload your content if you wish but you cannot keep it in location thus reducing the risks of, of creating centers and peripheries um, it seemed that we lost the screen. Can you please? Is anybody seeing the screen or? No. No. It says waiting for presenter to start sharing the screen. Yes. I'm redoing the maneuver. Apologies for the technical issues. Oh. There we go. So, um, so from the public perspective, you, we're really trying to focus on this idea of engaging and not only through messages, but also through comments, through lectures, through guided tours, auctions of the art, and so on. In terms of our development goals, as we just started building this platform, we really want to focus on a web browser experience because that offers us the possibility to reach a broader audience and then slowly and slowly developing more towards uh, high-end gear as VR sets and uh, uh, expensive, uh, powerful mobile devices. While uh, keeping the platform always available for uh, lowest um, uh, hardware that uh, you can own. And, and with the perspective of once the, this situation starts to become less strict, we want to bring all of this art into an AR experience with geotagging and so on. And so to before we take a leap in the museum, um, well, something that is very important to say is that the project has been, uh, we started to build it a month ago. So the exhibition that you, you'll be able to visit um, has been mounted from scratch in a month from software to artist. And we plan at every new release, every new upgrade and new functionality implemented in the software to organize an exhibition to create to present those new upgrades and functionalities. So now uh, let's visit Children of Cyberspace. Uh, I think this exhibition had been like a, an incredible experience from our room. We managed to gather uh, 12 artists from about seven countries, uh, three continents. We got, uh, as I mentioned before, La Mural Festival and uh, the Chateau uh, on board as institution uh, and partners and um, now let's uh, see what the space is so one of our criteria for designing the space was that since we have this 
basic kind of limitless environment we didn't want to we didn't want to be stuck by uh, no of gravity and, and like the physics that applies to the way so for that for that reason we tried to avoid any any kind of element that would produce a claustrophobic feeling we as many people are locked in, inside we wanted to create really this idea of freedom of exploration so we chose as an avatar the bird that is, and the environment to be floating above the clouds and thus we we were able to allow the, for artists complete freedom of uh, expression in terms of form. So I see the yellow spheres in the, in this shot are uh, actual firework that one of the artists decided to design for the for the opening of the platform in order to celebrate in the virtual world. And we're gonna have a look at some other artworks. So here we're inside the fi firework. It's uh, all animated. And uh, you see the spheres that are like um, uh, disrupting the rest of the, the space. Sometimes you visit another artwork and you have like a, a yellow uh, firework that like is coming close to you. Um, this, uh, this artwork had been like uh, made by the, uh, the crew of Amural Festival. And this is the first attempt of uh, bringing in the virtual space uh, their um, their edition, this tower represents one physical space that is iconic to their festival, a building located in Brasov, in Romania. Um, and you can go inside the artwork and navigate around it and so on. Um, you have some sculptures with like procedural effects, animation. Uh, this one, Bararasha uh, Akabari, you can turn around. Um, some animation again, like this one, uh, Mavalom. Um, Shader and uh, um, procedural graphics. Um, and finally, last but not least, the artwork uh, of Elam Younes uh, called Perception. And we'll let her talk more about it. But I can see it was one of the art, it was one of the sessions that actually exploited the platform and we played this idea of a gallery space with this work. I find it really interesting, her intention. And we're gonna let uh, Elem uh, set up her presentation. In the meantime, just to close up a bit, we are now developing the public aspect of the platform, developing the possibility for other artists to share their work. The way we envision this working is that anybody who posts his artwork on his own GitHub, Google Drive, personal server, whatever he wants, and then provides us with the URL. In reality, we're not actually hosting ourselves the content, but we're a hub that brings all of this content together to create a universe. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, I think we're uh, kind of hit our end. We're now looking at yeah, 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 partners, me, uh, me. Uh, anybody who's interested in joining the project. Uh, I, I would like to, to say like a few, a few, few words about uh, the project of a children of a cyberspace. And uh, first of all, thank everyone and, uh, here. Thank uh, everyone Judith here. for this and opportunity to give this presentation. And in dialogue, to invite me also as an artist um, to uh, show my uh, digital artworks in, uh, in, uh, in the platform. And um, actually, with uh, in dialogue, we had a previous um, uh, collaboration. Um, we've been part of uh, an Erasmus Plus project uh, for to create uh, a platform for uh, uh, artistic education. 
and we uh, we designed like um, it was like a really um, very interesting collaboration. Um, we designed uh, a plugin. Uh, it was uh, an app uh, that explores uh, the notions of randomness and uh, chaos. And um, this, uh, I can I can send you uh, the links to see uh, this uh, particular work. It was hard work, and I think uh, in dialogue. Uh, for it, I, I'm sharing the, the links. So, uh, and uh, this uh, actually uh, a 3G environment, uh, which we called a behavior interactive interface, um, allows users to set up uh, a deterministic environment or chaotic one. So um, we uh, we started like brainstorming about uh, uh, how the the interface will look like, uh, how uh, the the experience will be designed, etc., uh, etc., et and um, um, and to and to start actually from a theoretical framework that I, I, I've been. Um, uh, I've been elaborating about uh, how to uh, set up a, se a model for collaboration or research creation in general. And uh, this uh, behavior interactive interface uh, was uh, 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 the product of, um, uh, of joining theoretical and practical uh, uh, vision uh, of, uh, of randomness uh, and chaos. Um, so uh, this is what I wanted to add when I leave for the questions before I start the presentation. <laughs> Uh, did you hear me? Ah, yes. Ah, no. No, sorry. Did you hear uh, the, the talk? No, not really. Oh, uh, not really, uh, like nothing at all? No, it was like uh, ten, uh, f five or ten minutes, and then some pause. Ah, okay, uh, some of you heard it and some of you not, okay. Um, uh, I don't know, Judith, shall I continue and then we bring questions for both uh, in dialogue uh, and myself? Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, I don't hear you. <laughs> okay. Um. Hey, there's Ulrich Schraut who must talk. And he has to leave at 12.15. Okay. So maybe we take one question and finish? Sorry. Uh, I, 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 I didn't... Uh, Judith, I didn't present my um, ah yes yes okay. my, my work yet. <laughs> sorry, sorry, because I wasn't fun for, for, for yeah yeah okay sorry so, okay uh, but I will continue uh, yeah yeah <laughs> okay so I will uh, I will continue so um, also I like as part of um, uh, the Recto Verso Art Festival. I was invited by uh, uh, Judith as a, a, an artist in residency, and I will talk about uh, the project, uh, a little bit about my background, and then about uh, my project, A Journey of the Imaginary. Um, uh, so I, uh, I graduate from uh, a higher, the Higher Institute of Fine, Art of, uh, Fine Arts of Tunis, uh, the uh, engraving specialty. And then I uh, pursued my um, my studies in aesthetics at the University 
Paris 1, uh, Sorbonne. And uh, then I uh, obtained my uh, PhD degree from uh, Paris 8 uh, in Aesthetic Sciences and the Technology of Art. Uh, so, um, my uh, artistic approach is uh, mainly based on uh, the study of uh, phenomena of uh, perception and imagination, uh, as well as the study of the modalities of uh, construction of meaning, uh, especially in the era of uh, new technology. And uh, what I try to 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 do uh, through my uh, my artistic research is to provide an immersive experience uh, that allows visitors to um, go through or to be driven into uh, a dreamlike state and to um, raise uh, their awareness uh, to uh, their internal representations. Um, so the main, um, uh, let's say the main uh, topic uh, I'm exploring, it's like uh, the tissue underlying all the other, uh, all my artworks, is uh, the study of uh, altered uh, consciousness states and the coloration, uh, color correlation between altered consciousness states and eye behavior. So, uh, in one part, in the other part, also the correlation between eye behavior and what I call uh, the aesthetic of indeterminacy, or uh, I called it in my PhD, the aesthetic of the indiscernible. And I will explain later what I mean by, by uh, the aesthetic of uh, indeterminacy. And uh, also uh, the correlation between consciousness state and uh, the uh, aesthetic of uh, determinacy. So basically, actually, uh, there is a loop uh, uh, between eye movement uh, during art creation, uh, during perception, and uh, uh, consciousness state. And uh, another uh, loop between uh, um, the aesthetic aspect of an object or an image or a space or a text uh, between its familiarity or indeterminacy and the uh, cognitive processes and eye behavior. So, for example, if uh, we are faced with an indeterminate uh, shape, we can, uh, that triggers uh, a higher cognitive processes um, involving uh, uh, long-term memory, imagination, etc., etc., and uh, so it triggers uh, a special consciousness state that will be um, uh, manifested through a specific eye behavior. Also, when you are fa when you are faced with uh, something unfamiliar, um, our eyes will behave in a certain way to express this indeterminacy. For example, through long fixations. Um, also, uh, there is a correlation, and this is, uh, will be uh, about the project, the journey of the imaginary, uh, about the verbal uh, stimuli, for example, containing uh, sensory motor cues like up, down, right, left, etc. Um, and uh, eye behavior during imagination. Uh, uh, for example, if even if you close your eyes and you are uh, in uh, in darkness and you are hearing uh, um, a text or uh, uh, any sound that uh, contains sensory motor cues, the eyes unconsciously will move to the different directions to uh, in order to reflect these uh, special relations. So um, this uh, correlation between uh, eye behavior and um, and uh, consciousness state, uh, um, this study, like a long study during my PhD, gave uh, 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 the project Anima, uh, which is an interactive installation that uh, allow uh, users or visitors to draw with their eyes and to um, uh, enter. Uh, uh, a natural consciousness state. state. 
uh, so how uh, so um, I designed like particles and this is like the aesthetic of indeterminacy I'm, I'm talking about uh, it's not to uh, users cannot uh, uh, draw uh, recognizable figures and uh, the um, the originality of the experience is that um, the uh, the visitors, if they try to control the, the experience, if they try to uh, control uh, uh, their eye movements, uh, nothing will appear in the skin. If you really let go, and for this I use the trick, if you really let go and uh, abandon any desire of control, at that time, like particles will appear in the skin, uh, on the screen, and the visitor can start like uh, drawing uh, unconsciously, like it's an automatic drawing, like uh, automatic drawing, uh, 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 abstract uh, landscapes. Um, so, um, in my uh, artistic, uh, um, uh, let's say, in my artworks in general, so even plastic art, like. Uh, 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 I use this uh, visual indeterminacy uh, for static objects like these drawings. Uh, I will show you uh, uh, more um, uh, uh, artworks. Um, so uh, I use this indeterminacy to uh, set uh, the visitor um, and to drive him into a contemplative uh, attitude more than uh, um, uh, an attitude that will be uh, uh, more attached to recognition. So this, um, uh, aesthetically speaking, we will try to, to look for something familiar and this uh, cognitive process uh, will uh, call then uh, long-term memory and we'll try make visual associations, etc, etc. So I can show you like more artworks like uh, rapidly here, like these drawings. It goes also for um, um, 3D animation. Uh, to see the animation, I can give you another link on uh, YouTube. You can check it later. And uh, and uh, I worked with uh, more fluids because uh, indeterminate fluids and in order to trigger this mental imagery processes. Show you more, this more instance from 3G modelings. Virtual sculptures. So uh, random perception series that been exhibited in uh, children of uh, uh, cyberspace uh, um, uh, platform. Uh, are also the the, the result uh, of uh, this research, uh, theoretical and the scientific research about how uh, you perceive uh, an indeterminate shape. And what is interesting um, uh, with uh, with the platform Children of Cyberspace that you can really explore the full potential of. Uh, um, of perceiving a digital artwork in a digital world, and uh, this is uh, uh, and this is really amazing because uh, the the intention meets the presentation of of the artwork. Um, <laughs> So um, then um, I will go uh, a little bit quickly uh, now. So whether digital or plastic art, I I I use also randomness and visual indeterminacy, uh, as I said before, and I also try to bring my vision about digital uh, art and on contemporary art in general, uh, because I consider that uh, we need to use technology as a mean of expressing an idea or a concept. Uh, and not as um, uh, an end for itself, and uh, and to move also the discourse from the technical potential of any technology to its symbolic one, and this is what I try to to do through my my work in the journey of imaginary project. So how technology serves the meaning of uh, any designed experience. Um, 
So uh, for the journey of the imaginary project, I currently uh, exploring the role uh, uh, of sound in inducing altered consciousness states. Uh, this is something that I didn't explore before, so uh, I wanted to to bring the the, the, the sonic dimension to my uh, to my artwork uh, through the use of concrete noise, verbal cues, sensory motor cues. And more specifically, um, uh, to bring my passion about poetry, because I'm, I'm passionate about poetry and writing, um, that uh, this, these, my writings are driven by existential themes, uh, so that I you seek to express uh, through a hybrid art, uh, combining so the digital, the plastic, and, uh, the, uh, and literature. So what interests me um, about how to use technology is how to unite and to, to explore what unites us uh, on an unconscious level of the psyche, um, uh, to question the individual and collective destiny, to talk about free will and uh, determinism and uh, 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 other uh, subjects too. Uh, so, um, the journey uh, of the imaginary uh, is uh, planned to be uh, exhibited in the Bateau Lavoir uh, in Laval, the Saint Julien boat. Um, and, um, and, uh, and I uh, would like to uh, give uh, to the, my poetry a place where I can use the sound specialization, uh, how to put the recitals and uh, so on. Um, um, I write like in Arabic, French, and uh, and uh, in English. So I I want because I want to this artwork to um, speaks to or to touch uh, uh, a wide range of people. And uh, and so the idea is uh, to uh, emerge uh, visitors in an abstract poetic environment, uh, to put them in a meditative state, and uh, um, and the particular uh, uh, the particularity of uh, the experience is you need to do it like barefoot on the ground. So um, and. Uh, and uh, the way I would like to display speakers and also uh, um, in the space and give to a visitor, uh, to the visitor also uh, headphones, is to play with the, uh, the solitary and collective dimension of the experience. Um, so that's all. I will leave you with uh, like uh, a drawing and. Uh, uh, a text about uh, inspiration and uh, thank you for listening <laughs> okay thank you a lot Elam and Tiffany uh, like we are some late I propose to, to do questions for you just after to, to hold the people who want to, to stay to, to, to do questions but, but uh, we will uh, set up the, um, the next presentation and during the setup you can uh, you can answer uh, the question, okay? Just one, maybe, because I think it's ready. Are you okay, Lem Tiffany, with that? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So we will continue because we are very late and for the presentation. We are just the last presentation, so uh, we will continue now. And after we will take all the questions with uh, with, with the speaker can can stay and okay. Thank you. Okay. So then I maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay, I introduce Ulrich Schraut. He is the initiator and artistic director of VR HAM, Virtual Reality and Art Festival in Hamburg. Um, and Schraut is going to show us the history of this festival. Thank you, Schraut. Uh, Ulrich. <laughs> Can everyone hear me well? Yes. Yes, perfect. So, um, yes, my name is Ulrich Schraut. I'm the artistic director of VRAM Festival Virtual Reality and Arts. Uh, we call it the VRAM Festival, not VRHAM. Um, and um, first of all, I want to congratulate and to thank um, 
um, Judith and the whole Laval team to pull this off. Um, I think this is really amazing what you've done here. And we know there's a lot of technical issues. I have some too at the moment, but this is really, really great what you're doing here. And I know how much work this is. So I just really want to say thank you for hosting us here and bringing together the community. Um, yeah, clap, clap. Uh, that's very good. Um, okay. Just so you know, I um, have a little trouble with my Wi-Fi here in Hamburg um, because the whole region here uh, that I live in is gone. So I hope everything will stay up. If I just disappear at some point, uh, just so you know uh, what's happening. So um, one other thing maybe for you, I don't know who's been here the whole time. If you want to see my presentation a bit more closely, uh, you can um, click on the, the Zoom bar on the presentation and then you see the whole full screen. Um, so, yes, my name is Ulrich Schraut. I'm the artistic director, as I said, of RAM Virtual Reality. And uh, it's a festival focusing on virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality art. And, and we focus um, on um, showcasing this here in Hamburg as an annual festival. Um, and we had the first edition already in 2018. The second one was 2019 last year. And um, we uh, showcase this in a specialized environment in an old train station in Hamburg. You're going to see a few pictures of that in a second. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, as I said, it's an annual festival taking place in June every year. Um, and uh, we're going to see a few things um, of the festival setting. Next slide. What's really important for our festival is the combination of the physical space and the virtual artworks. So you can see here that we present the artworks in specialized settings and set decorations, etc., that contextualize the artworks. Um, my background uh, is theater, performing arts, festivals. Um, so uh, I heard the presentations of uh, the people before, uh, and it's very interesting for me to frame that. Um, so uh, as I said, the, the focus that we have is really on the festival um, and how to exhibit these in the physical surrounding and contextualization. Uh, next slide, please. Here you see another representation and um, yeah, that's good, thanks. Um, and you can also see um, here we uh, parts of the, the venue that we showcase the, the festival in and some of the um, events that we have. So the whole festival is more than a week and we have a lot of discourse program. We showcase uh, an award. Uh, we give out these awards through a jury. You can see here on the picture, I hope uh, you can see it, uh, there's some People that we know in the VR world, uh, for example, the last jury uh, was um, Mira Masha from Centre Fille, Astrid Kamke from Munich, and uh, Michel from Venice VR. And we give out the Vremi Award, so it's not the Emmy anymore, it's the Vremi that we give in two categories. We can go to the next slide. Just a very, very quick overview of the festival last year. Uh, it ran nine days. We had 4,000 visitors. Um, we always do an open call for our festival so people can um, uh, submit their artworks. And last year we had 251 submissions from 36 countries, um, which was amazing for a festival in its second year. We were really happy. We show had uh, 56 artists that we showcased from 11 countries. And we also had uh, also already in the last year a uh, online version of the festival um, together with our festival partner, the Deutsche Telekom, um, the telecommunication company. Uh, and they had a dedicated um, channel, uh, it's called Magenta VR, where you could see some of the artworks we were showcasing uh, free of charge all over the uh, over Germany um, and uh, get an access to the festival in that respect. I'm going to talk about that a little more in a second. And you can see we had 88% new visitors and especially young audience. Uh, wait a second, not so fast. Now, yeah, now go to the next slide. Thanks so much. Um, here you see uh, the three strands of our program. So um, 
um, the very core of the program is the, we call it exhibition. So it's an exhibition format where you can actually uh, see the artworks in contextualized settings, set decorations, um, and it's national uh, international artistic experience. We also showcased Hamburg-based emerging artists. We gave out residencies. Um, we had an interactive playground, etc. So it was a very wide range of things you could see in this exhibition. But also we had a very strong focus on live and performative works. Uh, we showcased um, uh, four different works and from very different genres. So one was more from the performance art, uh, one was more concert um, uh, that we showcased. We also had um, a dance piece um, that that was um, exhibited and so that was our live program and we had a big um, focus also on vr and music where we had a big um, discourse panel and and program around um, how to exhibit concerts music together with vr and ar and then because we want to have it as accessible as possible we had something called Bremer top where everyone could just see um, and experience uh, artworks uh, also inside the city of Hamburg. Um, so, for example, we had an augmented reality installation um, where people could just experience the art inside the city. Just to make sure, is everyone hearing me okay? Is the sound okay? Yeah, all yeah. good. Yeah, very good. Good. Yes, so, here you see three of on the next slide, please. <laughs> On the next slide, you see three of the examples of our live program from last year. It was Food VR here from France. Uh, we had um, a performance of Julia, uh, Julia and Romeo um, uh, as a live program, as performative art, and also uh, a concert by Myra Schott. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, what's important for us as a festival? Um, uh, I think we talked a lot about already today about how to exhibit these artworks and how uh, museums can, can um, look differently on those in exhibitions. But I think for us, the social interaction is also super, super important. So people coming together um, and really experiencing it together, um, I think we all know how much of an impact virtual reality art can make on the viewers. So I know myself, sometimes I really have the feeling when I get out of an artwork, I really need to talk to someone. So we give space to that. Uh, we give um, possibilities to sit down, to relax and to talk and really have the festival feeling. You see the bar here where people are sitting and talking. You see uh, the, the discourse program um, where we talk about different topics um, um, and about social, political relevance of VR as an art form, etc. So uh, next slide, please. So uh, after the edition uh, 2019, we were already planning the 2020 edition. Uh, next slide. Which was bound uh, to happen 5th until 13th of June 2020 here in Hamburg. Uh, we had a lot of things already in place. Um, next slide, please. We already had the set design uh, for the venue, which was supposed to be very different from last year, of course. Um, and next slide. We also um, uh, were talking with the artists already about how to exhibit their artworks um, uh, inside the space and um, how to contextualize them also with things like projection mapping and physical experiences. Uh, next slide. But then something, I think we all know what uh, came between our uh, good intentions um, and we had to completely reevaluate what we wanted to do. Next slide. Yes, uh, so I mean, the effects of COVID-19 are confronting all of our cultural institutions. Um, and uh, to take on the task, especially as a virtual arts festival, um, is very challenging. Um, everyone, I think, is thinking, okay, this is really at hand. Uh, we can showcase this in a virtual world. But as I just said, for us, it's super, super important um, to contextualize it with physical objects, with a meaning um, inside the space and also with social interaction. But we had the feeling and we had the obligation also talking to a lot of the artists we were supposed to exhibit uh, and to other players inside the VR community to try to really make an effort and to try to make a digital implementation 
of our festival. So we decided, next slide please, to make an experiment uh, just like the one we're just standing in here um, and to especially talking to all of our partners and the artists, how, what can we do to get meaning and how to create a virtual version of our festival that also can be something that we can use in the following years and that can complement the physical installations and the festival that we have in Hamburg. And so we really tried to think hard uh, how to do this experiment of transforming the complete artistic program in an almost real experience with um, virtual features. And once again, I want to say it's so inspiring, Judith, what you've done here and also what you've done with your um, exhibition. Uh, I had a look uh, on the website already. Um, and um, one, if you're doing this, you really have to think about uh, what is your focus? Is it really more the accessibility? Is it more showing the artworks? Is it more of a representation in the space? And um, we decided for our festival, it's really about accessibility. Uh, we're trying to get as many people the opportunity as possible. So we're also thinking about VR equipment distribution, etc. But uh, for us, it's really about showcasing the virtual worlds in specialized settings and really the whole um, experiences itself as, let's say, uh, 360 videos, as executable files, etc. So people can really dive into the artworks and get a glimpse of um, what the artists um, are showcasing here. And so we decided, and uh, I give you a sneak preview here. It's not official yet. We will uh, make it official beginning of next week, but next slide. We will partner with two very interesting partners um, with, um, sorry, with Museum of Other Realities and Kaleidoscope. I don't know who of you knows the Museum of Other Realities. Um, it's a super interesting um, uh, possibility to showcase um, um, virtual reality artworks, but also 3D artists. Um, and they have a wide range of artists that they work with. They have started 2017 and they built a complete venue, like a whole museum inside the VR world. And um, you can access it as an avatar, you can talk to other people, uh, you can have uh, guided uh, tours around it, you can meet the artists there. And I think it's a very interesting platform for our experiment uh, to try and showcase our, this, our program for this year in this environment. And we also partnered with Kaleidoscope, I think all of you know them. Um, uh, to bring together the community and, um, and to, to deliver this experience. It's going to be a four day uh, festival. Um, the opening will be on the 4th of June until uh, and the, the whole festival will run until the 7th of June, the Sunday. And we have an award show. Uh, we're going to have artist talks, discourse program, etc. We can just go to the next slide, please. Um, so what do I see? Um, wait a second. Is that... How do I gain access? Um, so we want to make it as accessible as possible. We're going to use um, possibilities for live streaming, but also for mobile VR. And Museum of Other Realities is uh, accessible by PC VR and beta version of Quest, uh, hopefully. So there will be different possibilities to experience the festival itself. Next slide. Now, here's a very short overview about accessibility in different um, uh, in different uh, mediums and with different devices. Next slide. And we try to um, have the visual design very close to what we would have in our virtual, uh, in our physical representation of the festival in the venue and um, to have uh, an, an entrance area and like a real exhibition area where people can walk around as their avatars and uh, experience the artworks. Next one. And um, the experience is um, hopefully being very straightforward and very accessible to a very large audience. And as I said, um, I think the interactivity between the different users being in the world at the same time and being maybe on their live stream at home, um, that's something that we work on and that we want to experiment with together. Next slide.
and the program will um, consist of artist talks, panels, keynotes. As I said, we're going to have an opening ceremony, a uh, live program, and also we try to include the, the live performances um, that we actually had already scheduled uh, and try to find representations of that inside the virtual world. Next slide. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you find the details there. Um, I'm just going to share the um, the website of our festival. Please uh, stay in touch and um, stay tuned uh, what's going to happen. And uh, let's see where we end up. As I said, it's an experiment. And I look forward to experience all of this together with you guys and make a very interesting festival, RAM 2020. Thanks very much. Thank you. So, sh so shall I ask questions? We have the time, or what? I don't know what the timing yeah, is. Yeah, maybe, ask? maybe. Yes, maybe we can know. Uh, I'm afraid Susan can ask you some one or two question, and after with the audience, it could be nice like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um. Could you um, enter a bit more into the way you have uh, transformed uh, real festival, real events into virtual ones in terms of modeling, in terms of the engines we have uh, chosen to, to be able to make it? Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, the Museum of Other Realities platform is a platform that runs in Steam. Um, so we will ha have to adapt all our modeling um, as well as the artworks, but also the venue modeling, set decorations, etc., to um, uh, the Unity environment, obviously. Um, but um, in what I just said, trying to bridge the gap between the VR user experience, obviously, which a lot of people here inside the room will be, and also the, the people on their screens or smartphones or mobile VR. Um, we will have live streamings um, both in 360 and in 2D. Um, so people can actually follow. Um, we are working on chat functions um, to, to bridge the gap between the physical and the, the virtual space. That's what we're working on at the moment. <laughs> Yes. So, um, and, and what about organizing organizing the management of such a, an event, which is quite uncontrollable because it's so experimental? Yeah. Well, ask my amazing colleagues that are also here in the room. Uh, for example, Sabrina and Jill, uh, they're just here. Um, it's a huge effort, and uh, I. No one would be able to do this without such a great team. And I can see here also in Laval uh, how much work has been going in there. All the small bits and pieces that you don't even think about when you start um, the experience in the first moment. And uh, you just have an idea to transform that. Um, and um, so there's a lot of work, but I think we have a great team. And also the partners, um, as I said, more in Kaleidoscope, they're really, really um, great. We also work with another partner that we have a long-standing tradition with in VR that are doing the modeling for us um, and especially all the artists. I mean, it was, I didn't uh, really want to go too deep into that, but they were thrilled by the idea and they said, oh my God, well, let's try something new and try to find a physical representation inside the virtual and to try to find interaction even in, in certain um, um, ways that haven't been done uh, with their experiments before. So, um, yeah. Um, so the main obstacles, uh, what, how would you name them, the main obstacles? Mm. The main obstacle for me at the moment is the accessibility, to be quite honest, because um, the idea that we envision and <clears throat> is um, really immersive. And um, from what I've seen so far from our testings and uh, et cetera, the immersive experience really has a very strong possibility both in experiencing an art artistic exhibition in a very different way and also have a social interaction and also a meaningful social interaction um, um, but as soon as you get out of the very immersive uh, possibilities if you're just on your computer or if you have sort of a webinar moment uh, i feel the lack of concentration and the lack of um, yeah, immersion inside the artistic experiences that's really a very very big issue but uh, we know, I think everyone in this room knows about this um, obstacle and um, we can all just try to 
overcome these and to get closer to um, to a possibility to showcase this. And just to make this clear again, this is never going to be a substitute for a real physical festival. We do this because we really want to show the artists, we want to value their work, um, that they have trusted us with to exhibit this. Um, and uh, it is something new and we try to make the best out of it, but it's not going to substitute what we normally want to do. And I think it's the same for Laval. Um, uh, we really want to get together as a community and especially uh, give people access who haven't seen VR or VR art before. Thank you. Is there one more question? Yeah. Or, or maybe for questions from the public? Yeah, uh, maybe I have a question. Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. To Tiffany and to Ellen, Tiffany. and uh, in regard with what you also speak, uh, Ulrich, uh, because uh, it's very interesting to see uh, that physical festival we adapt uh, in virtual way and uh, and uh, to also have cre uh, to readapt creation that was made for real in virtual, but for a real festival and to try to readapt it and maybe uh, to Tiffany and Ellen uh, about the, 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 your, your museum in, in the cloud, like you you, you opened uh, also, uh, um, uh, how you say, uh, for the, to, to a new way for the artist to create, but just for your virtual world, maybe. I don't know if you can. Uh, no, so I think one uh, like one common factor in those like physical and virtual space is uh, the public experience, and what we what we want to um, bring in this virtual space is also like a form of immersion interaction because when it's not just about looking, especially when we're talking about today's uh, mixed media technology, they have a sort of small center between the user and the device or the software, which sometimes, which actually was one of our hardest jobs was to determine what kind of functions we, we need to add on top of the function of just viewing, because it almost be, becomes a different experience to have, to have another layer of uh, uh, engagement from the audience. And like, there is no intention whatsoever that this platform will replace any physical space, and uh, for the moment, it's obviously more relevant to focus on the virtual aspects, but uh, we want to bring the project forward, and, as we said, in the reality, um, and to create some event events that are happening in the yeah. physical world and that are creating some uh, human flesh-to-flesh -flesh social interaction. For example, it's in the festival, the one that it's in Rom was supposed to be in Romania, and I was seeing it in the in the AR context, but can be decentralized. And being able to make like some some performance of their artists from uh, so stream from Romania and displayed in New York, on, or vice vice versa, to make some artists that wouldn't physically uh, join the festival and. Um, and uh, to be present and for their work. Yeah, okay, nice. And uh, and Elam, uh, as a, as an artist, uh, what uh, I I can say what you prefer because I think it's very different to create. Yeah, for, uh, I don't know in this, in these different spaces and in these different contexts, real, virtual, and this all this space age. Um, actually, uh, it's um, it's very challenging. Uh, uh, it's not uh, a question of uh, preference. It's more a question uh, of how the intention meets uh, the objective. So, uh, for example, uh, since I am like more uh, both like a plastic artist and digital uh, artist, I navigate through diff these three diff these different words actually from um, different from the phenomenological experience, let's say, from the perceptual experience. 
because the way you engage your body in the virtual world to create is not the same uh, when you create, when you draw, or, or you, you paint, or 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 you sculpt uh, a physical uh, uh, object or use physical materials. So what I find interesting about uh, actually um, uh, the, uh, the the platforms that it's um, especially for digital art because I always think okay if I make a digital uh, painting or uh, an, uh, a digital sculpture uh, how am I going to show it in the real world and usually when uh, um, when we look uh, at um, uh, uh, exhibition uh, or conditions we have like you, you need to show it on a screen or use for, for example uh, some techniques like uh, I don't know it can be paper ghost or something to uh, show uh, the the um, artwork so I think that digital artworks have the same problem as the physical ones once you move them from one space to another you know the di the plastic in the digital yeah. and the digital in the physical mm -hmm. so um, because to embrace the full nature of um, of the digital matter of the plastic matter to uh, you need to to um, to have this like the same I, I believe in that like not the same but to go close or closer to the to the perceptual experience during creation so it, it has been done mm -hmm. in a virtual space so the way it, it, it has been uh, designed and conceptualized it you need to move your body you need to virtualize your body to 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 uh, to embrace uh, its uh, its essence <laughs> wow Actually. okay very interesting so okay that thank you very very much to all the speaker to try this experimentation this morning and to all the audience also uh, we can continue question i just want to say thank you and and the speaker if they can can stay here and all the audience don't hesitate to to also ask question but very very thank you and i'm very happy it's work it's work <laughs> with some bug, but very nice thank you paul <laughs> And a big thank you to the Laval virtual team for putting this together. It's <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> thank you, so. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, too. So don't hesitate. If you have any questions, we can stay here a bit. And after we go back uh, here, same at 3 p.m. for all the, the other art conferences. <rire> Bonjour Judith. Bonjour. <rire> Comment vas-tu Ça va, ça va. <rire> c'est incroyable cette expérience quand même. Hein ouais, ben là ça, ça marche, c'est bon, on a réussi à, <rire> à tenir la matinée. <rire> Avec oui, autant de monde en ligne, plus de 1000 personnes en ligne euh, et plus de 200 personnes dans, dans les salles de conférence, c'était... Non, c'est bien. <rire> Puis, euh, ce qui vient d'être dit est vachement intéressant hein, sur cette idée de phénoménologie. Et de ouais. Et du, euh... bah là, tout le monde t'écoute. En plus, si tu veux en parler, euh, n'hésite pas. <rire> bah, écoute, euh, oui, bah, c'est quelque chose qui, moi, me, me concerne beaucoup en tant que chorégraphe, justement, et qui me questionne beaucoup quand on transfère la l'aspect de perception corporelle dans les univers virtuels, forcément. C'est ce qui, ce qui retient beaucoup mon attention, justement, dans tous ces univers du VR, en tant que chorégraphe, c'est que ça peut permettre une sorte de... Enfin, au niveau de l'expérience, ça peut permettre, peut-être même dans certaines circonstances, si le projet est bien monté, d'accroître, d'approfondir cette, 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 cette matière perceptive, justement. Mmh. Quelque chose de... Euh, qui, 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 qui est comme un pointeur vers des choses qu'on peut ne pas ressentir dans la vie dite normale, réelle. Quoi, ouais. 
Donc, oui. c'est... Et en dehors, en dehors de l'aspect thérapeutique, hein, je m'entends, hein, d'un point de vue strictement artistique. Hein. Mm -hmm. bah oui, c'est ce que tu disais, l'âme, super intéressant, quoi, que tu arrivais à retrouver l'essence de ton... <rire> ouais, exactement. De ta création, c'était fou. Ouais. Bah, écoute, si tu veux, Jean-Marc, on peut, on peut se voir à un autre moment plus tranquille dans les, dans les jours. Euh... Oui, bien sûr, tout à fait, tout à euh, fait. Il y a des euh... espaces de réunion et des espaces de meeting, donc si tu veux, euh, je serai plus tranquille le vendredi ou le jeudi matin aussi, peut-être. Euh... D'accord. Ok, vendredi ou jeudi matin. Ok, super, ça marche. <rire> voilà, bah c'est super. J'espère que tu as vu la, la love qu'on a du coup euh, présentée. Oui, donc je, première je, présentation. je suis allé sur le site effectivement pour regarder, euh, regarder la galerie virtuelle euh, qui effectivement, euh, tu, tu peux explorer. Moi, je pensais que ça allait être dans l'univers 3D dans lequel on se trouve actuellement, mais en fait, c'est... Non. Ouais, non, non, c'est deux choses différentes, c'est pour ça. Puis on aura une version réalité virtuelle aussi, puis ça, sera, ça va évoluer, quoi. c'est déjà une étape. Ouais. Euh, ouais, ouais. c'est ça, on non, présente par contre, hein, déjà, le... déjà... tu peux voir le bâtiment recto verso, il y a plusieurs choses aussi où tu peux te, te, te promener dans le bâtiment et, euh, et, euh, et ah, du sur, coup, le, voilà. sur le site lui-même, là, j'ai voilà, sur le site lui-même, il y a, y a go de l'expo, voilà. tu me dis, je peux, je peux sortir alors aussi, ouais. tu fais go to recto verso, tu arrives au building recto verso et, euh, et là, tu as des descriptions du festival, tu peux cliquer sur les écrans et ça t'amène sur différentes choses sur, euh, sur le festival. D'accord, super. <rire> bon, bah, c'est super que tu sois venu ici en tout cas. Ben oui, écoute, hein, je prends un petit moment à la journée. Hein. Ouais, ouais, super. Donc, à bientôt. Belle à bientôt. Belle, ouais. belle cite à toi, oui. Merci. À Merci, bientôt. au revoir. Bon, je pense qu'on va peut-être pouvoir bouger si les si personnes ont. If on a some questions, don't hesitate. Also, to talk to me by chat and we can. Uh... And to Suzanne, to LM, to Tiffany. And... Ok, bah, thank you, thank you, Hélène, Tiffany, <rire> Suzanne, thank you so much. <rire> thank, thank you, thank you, Judith. Judith. It was very sportif. <rire> the, 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 yeah, the, the, congratulations. <rire> uh, everything uh, worked uh, fine, yeah. <rire> really, congratulations. Well, sorry, Suzanne, for your presentation. You, you... But maybe we can find a way to, to put it online and we'll see. <laughs> okay, that's a good idea because it was quite frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. I try to do better than tomorrow. Maybe it, maybe just having a PDF is enough. Yeah, maybe, but today I have tried. Uh, um, in fact, actually, the problem was your success <laughs> because you you have lo lo lot of person comes for your conference and uh, oh. and there is too much person at the same time try to see the screen and it crash, tranquil crash. And it's just wow. for that because no, you see, after there is just 100 and all, but with you, more than 2000, uh, more than 200, sorry. <laughs> so for that, for that, I see there is a pushing and and at the, a lot of people connect at the same time to see the share screen while and, and it's crash. So it's really uh, because uh, a lot of people comes to see your subject. But <laughs> well, I hope they were not frustrated. They must have been completely no, frustrated. No, but yeah, and... but, but I think it was very nice because you you are you had the time to present. Uh, lot of things and after you have made a conclusion and with all we have seen uh, it was very complimentary so i think for for an introduction for all of us <laughs> it was nice and and, it, and you, you you do well with uh it was well nice <laughs> well thanks thank you judith okay i think uh, all I, I will go to continue and uh, yeah, if you want, continue. maybe maybe I go to the Suzanne. I will go to the main hall of the recto verso. If you want to just talk to me and oh yes, why not? Uh, not in oh, this, that's a good uh, idea. This is space. Right, the main hall. Okay. Go to recto verso. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to recto verso. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>